Bolivian President Evo Morales stated that he was expelling U.S. Ambassador Philip Goldberg for allegedly inciting violent opposition protests. Pido noche, Canciller de la República, cumpliendo los marcos legales, diplomáticos, enviar hoy al embajador haciendo conocer la decisión del gobierno nacional de su presidente para que urgentemente retorne a su país. No queremos gente separatista, divisionista, ni conspiren contra la unidad. No queremos personas que atenten contra la democracia. Morales' announcement came hours after a pipeline blast, triggered by saboteurs, forced the country to cut natural gas exports to Brazil. The Bolivian leader did not offer specific evidence against Goldberg, but he has long accused the diplomat of conspiring with Bolivia's conservative opposition. It's extremely important, and in terms of Bolivia's international relations, in particular the United States, it will have enormous repercussions. It's likely to play very well domestically. Internationally, they don't really have a lot of hard evidence to prove that the ambassador was plotting a coup, although common sense would indicate that he was clearly coordinating with opposition politicians in the run-up to uh, the latest events. Nevertheless, I think the important thing for the Morales government to do is to deal with the people who are running things on the ground in Santa Cruz and other lowland departments, rather than focusing on the U.S. ambassador as a target of government anger. So in a way, it's kind of, it's sort of an easy way to blow off steam with Morales' base without actually confronting the people who have really escalated their assault on central government power in the last few days. Anti-Morales protests reached a crescendo this week with the sacking and burning of government offices in Santa Cruz. The departmental prefects and the civic committees that back them, along with their kind of shock troops, the youth wing of the right-wing reaction, they have begun to try to implement their own control in their regions through violence by installing departmental police, departmental tax collectors. So they are implementing the agenda that they approved without legal sanction back in June. And Morales' victory was so overwhelming that in a way he forced them to up the ante if they were going to continue to contest his government because he won 67% and increased his vote by 13% over 2005. And above all, he made his biggest gains in the heartland of the right-wing reactionary territory. While Morales' opponents continue to destabilize the government, experts say there still may be room for negotiation. Sometimes when it appears that things have already gone overboard, in Bolivia at least there's still the possibility that uh, there will be negotiation or discussion or something of that nature. In this case, I would not bet my money on negotiation. It appears that confrontation is inevitable. The issue of whether Morales can make concessions that would be sufficient for the media luna without betraying the demands that brought him to power on the back of popular insurrection is essentially the basic dilemma that the Morales gov government has faced since it entered office, and it has so far been unable to resolve that question. The strategy has been to give as many concessions as seem required for purposes of political expediency in any given moment, such as the design of the Constitutional Assembly. In the medium term, these kind of concessions proved to be disastrous for the government that made them in the first place, and yet the strategy continues to be concession after concession, although we may have reached a boiling point in that respect. It's not clear how the government can give any concessions in the face of this sort of secessionist crisis, because that's what we're dealing with. It's not clear how the government could accede to secessionist demands without fundamentally betraying everything that it purports to stand for. So the question then becomes, well, what is going to be the government response? And that's a question for which there is as yet no answer.